Hi, I'm Nathan Manzani, and this is Catching Steam. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take this classic chemistry demonstration and turn it into a must-do activity that you'll want to do with your students. Stay tuned. Okay, before I explain the activity that I have students do, there are a couple different activities I have students do. Um, I kind of want to run you through a demonstration that I like to do uh, to introduce all these new chemicals to them. So, um, put on some safety glasses, and this part isn't necessary, I just think it's kind of funny. Uh, so what I do is I say, okay, this is my magical pink glove, and it's pink. So, if I put on this pink glove, I hold a cup with it, any clear liquid that I'm going to pour into it, <laughs> It also turns pink. All right. Well, what happens if I pour out of this cup, so out of the pink glove, and then I pour it into another cup? <laughs> it goes back to clear. Now, I can already see what you're saying. You're probably like, Mr. V, it has nothing to do with the glove you're holding or wearing. It has everything to do with you just pouring it back and forth between a couple different cups. So just to really prove my point that it's a glove, I hold this in my hand, give it a little swirl. Look at that. It goes right back to pink. See, it has everything to do with this glove. All right. Now, like I said, this is just a fun little demonstration to do with students before you actually run through these different activities. And you already kind of got a glimpse of one of the activities that they do. Uh, I use a chemical called phenolphthalein, and it is right here. You can buy it in a powder form or already pre-mix in a solution. I prefer to have it uh, in the powder form because I feel like it runs, it goes a lot further for me. Uh, so what I do is you have to take this powder and then you mix it into some rubbing alcohol. And then after that, and that's what I did here. Now this whole, just maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon, it doesn't take a whole lot. So after I get a little bit of this chemical that uh, you can get on Amazon or online for about $20 or so, $20, $30. It's pretty cheap. This bottle's lasted me about 10 years. So what, what I do is I just put a little bit of that powder in a container of rubbing alcohol. Now this is my indicator solution. So what I mean by indicator solution is if it becomes alkaline, so if the pH is above 8.2 to about 10, it's gonna go pink. That's, so that's what this is. If it goes below 8.2, it's gonna end up becoming clear. So if you have something acidic, it's gonna be clear. If you turn it um, alkaline, it's gonna go to pink. And the really neat thing about it is you can just keep going back and forth and back and forth. Well, the common demonstration I typically see is just that one change. But you can do another change and another change and another change. And rather than you trying to figure out how to do you know, 10 color changes in front of them, you're gonna have them do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through what this uh, activity looks like in the classroom. Now, re remember, I have two activities I want to show you. This first one's my favorite and it's a must do for any teacher that teaches chemistry. So the objective is to see how many color changes you can make. This first cup, let's say it's clear, you're going to have it turn pink and then go back to clear, go back to pink, so on and so forth. So remember, if the pH is above about 8.2, it's going to turn pink. If the pH is below 8.2, it's going to be clear. So they need to go base, acid, base, acid, base, acid, so on and so forth. Um, now, this first cup, uh, what I do is I just pour some water in it. Now, in my case, I actually have some distilled water because my tap water will turn this pink already. It's just already alkaline enough to make it pink. So I have some distilled water here, and then I put a little bit of phenolphthalein after that. And remember, there's phenolphthalein mixed in this container rubbing alcohol. Nice thing about this is that you see it doesn't take very much. So they don't really need this after that. Um, they, they just need a little bit of that first time and then they're, they're good until they go, go to do it again. So if you want, you can have a container that's clearly labeled and you can just put a little bit of phenolphthalein in this entire container and then they just pour from this and then that's their first, first cup. You can do that, but I just like to, you know, see where they're at. It's a time for, hey, what happened there? Did it, did it not work? Why not? Because they kind of have to come to me each time when they, uh, when, when they need to do it again. Uh, so from there, they have an acid and a base. 
And what I use for this, for my acid, I use vinegar, and for my base, I used ammonia. But please, 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 please dilute this stuff. You do not need to give them straight vinegar and straight ammonia. It does not need to be that strong. In fact, what I did for this, I was about out of ammonia. It was down to about here, and then just filled the rest of it with water. And I did the same thing for this vinegar. I think it was down to here or so, and I just filled it with water. I, I apologize, those aren't exact measurements or anything but you can just get a large container of let's say water and you can just put you know, 100, 200 milliliters at a time of this stuff in the, into those clearly labeled containers of what they are. Um, and then you just get a little bit of acid, a little bit of base, and then they are pretty much set. So like I said, these are nice little containers you can use too. I have the, the blue one as my base and this one's my acid, but if you're using these for students, uh, you would obviously label them but so let's say I have, you know, my base, I'm going to put a little bit of base in this cup here. And then I'm going to put some acid in this cup. And then I'll put some base in this cup. Now notice what I'm doing is I'm going, so I'm clear and then I'm going base, acid, base, acid. Now I'm setting everything up before I do anything. You can't pour your cup, see what happened, and then pour your next cup, see what happened. Like in my mind, that's cheating. So what, what I tell students is they get as many cups as they want, but the last one is the only one that counts. So whether you do this, you know, in, in front of the class, they come up and they put all the cup, set up all the cups, or, you know, they set up their cups at their lab station and you go through like, hey, this is your final run. Okay, let's see it. And I typically do that the second or third day, depending on know how much time I have allotted for this activity. So that's kind of the, the final project for this. And the best part about doing it that way is no matter how meticulous they were on filling out how many drops they put in everything, there's always somebody who's just like, hey, I think it needs a little bit more base in this cup or a little bit more acid in that cup, and they end up messing it up. So that's a really good conversation to have with students is, you know, hey, let's learn from our mistake, learn from our mistakes, but you know what happened there? And, you know, do you think scientists run in things like that? And, you know, being able to have those conversations, this is great for that. But anyway, I have my first cup. I pour it and it turns pink. So I got one color change so far. And now I go here and it goes to acid. And then I go to my last cup that I have set up. And oh man, it didn't work. And notice I'm, I have to pour all of my liquid from this cup to the next cup. So what, why didn't that work? Well, I intentionally messed this one up for you, but this is, you know, what happens a lot. Students will put, so in this case, I put too much acid in this cup. If you rewind it back, I put a full pipette in here. And then what that means is I would need to have a lot of base in this cup, or I could have just put less acid in that one. So there, some students will be like, hey, I need, I need more base in this cup now. Well, or you could have just used less acid in the previous cup. And then the same thing will happen on the uh, on the flip side. So at this point, I messed up. So now I'm going to empty out all my cups, rinse them out, um, or just use paper towels, wipe them out. And then from there, I need my fresh container of water. You give me phenolphthalein, and then I try again. So I get everything set up. And like I said, that last last run is the only one that I count. You can do it however you, however you want. Um, now another activity I like to do after this. Um, so this is the really engaging one that I really recommend everyone that teaches chemistry to do this activity. The next one is honestly more of what you use phenolphthalein for. It's to figure out how acidic or alkaline a solution is. So what I would do here is I would just have, you know, eight to 10 water bottles and I would put different amounts of acid or base in all of them to make them all a different pH. And then I give a small sample to each group of each one. So maybe give them a test tube of each one, however you want to do it. And then they need to figure out how um, the order of pH they are. So which one's the most acidic, line it up all the way to the one that's the most alkaline. And how, you don't have to tell them this, but how you do it is, you know, you need to put phenolphthalein in all the samples. The ones that are already alkaline will turn pink. And then you need to keep putting acid in them until they go clear again. Um, and then more, the more acid it takes, the more alkaline it was to be able to go clear. And then the ones that were still clear after they put the phenolphthalein in it, you need to keep adding base to it until it turns pink. So you already know like, hey, these ones are acidic, these ones are alkaline, so now I just need to order the acids and order the bases 
however you want to set it up. But that one's a really good, probably one day activity uh, that I, I like to do as well. And uh, a lot of great conversations you can have afterwards, maybe hey, talking about acids or bases, or even just learning how to run, you know, an experiment or recording your data and things like that. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I almost forgot. How did I do that little thing where, okay, so it was clear and then I turn it pink again with my other glove. Um, what I did is I took a, and I do not have students do this. Don't have students do this. This is just you for your demonstrations to make it look like, you know, you're a magician. Um, it's more impressive now that you know how this is done. It's like, wait, how did that work? Um, so what I did is I took a small drop of water, very small drop of water, and I put it on the inside lip of the cup just above where the water level would be in my first cup. So I just put a little drop of water and then I took a, a very small flake of, in my case, I use sodium hydroxide, um, any like hydroxide, anything that's like in a flake form. I just put a very small flake right on the lip of, or not the lip, but right where that water drop was at. And then from there, I kind of let it dry. So if you have multiple classes, you'd set these up ahead of time. And so you just let it dry for a minute. And then when you flip it back up, it should be, should stay there. And then after that, make sure your very first cup, that water level is below where that flake is at. So then when you pour it, okay, now the, that water's still below where that flake is. And then when you give it a swirl with the other hand, that will knock off that flake and then turn it alkaline again. So thank you for sticking, uh, thank you for sticking with me to the end. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you know, always you can give me a comment if you have any questions, but thank you very much.